Welcome to our lecture online. In this video, we're going to try to find the energy stored in the circuit with the two inductors and then, of course, the mutual inductance between the two inductors at a particular moment in time. So here we have the result of the previous videos where we calculated the current for I1 and I2 as a function of time, of course, including the phase angle. And here we have the equation that tells us that the energy stored in the circuit is one half times the inductance of the first inductor times the current through that inductor at that moment in time squared plus one half the, the second inductor uh, times the current to that inductor quantity squared at that moment in time plus or minus the mutual in the mutual inductance or the mutual coupling times the product of the inductance of the first inductor and the inductance of the second inductor now what about the plus or minus because that is very important well, notice that if the current enters the inductor at the dot for both the inductors, then it becomes plus. If one enters on one side and the other one enters on the other side, the non-dot of the inductor, then we end up with a minus. So in this case, since both of the currents enter the inductor on the dot side of the inductor, we then have a positive sign there. So in this case, it is positive. All right, first we need to find the current after one second in the circuit so we want to find the energy when time equals one second so we need to find the current in each case so i when t equals one second is equal to 3.905 times the cosine of four times one that is of course in radians minus 19.399 degrees all right so first we have to convert radians to degrees or degrees to radians, whichever you prefer. I like to go from radians uh, to degrees. So I have 4 times 180 divided by pi equals, that's 229.183. So this becomes 3.905 times the cosine of 229.183. Point one eight three minus nineteen point three nine nine degrees. So this is equal to three point nine zero oh five times the cosine of so minus nineteen point three nine nine equals that gives me two zero oh nine point seven eight four degrees. So now I take the cosine of that, which is going to be a negative number times 3.905 and that gives me a minus 3.389 amps so that is the current when time equals one second or current one so this is i1 all right how about i2 so it's 3. Oh, 3.254254 times the cosine of four times one radians and here the phase angle is plus 160.601 degree. So again, we replace that with what it is in degrees. So when T equals 1, that's 3.254 times the cosine of 229.183 degrees plus 160.601 degrees. All right, so that is equal to, uh, let's see, 229.183 plus 160.601 that gives me 3.254 times the cosine of 389.784 degrees 84 degrees take the cosine of that and multiply that times 2.254 oop 3.254 254 equals and that gives me a positive 2.824 amps so this is i2 at t equals 1. all right so now that i have the two currents at that moment in time i can now plug that into the equation so the energy is equal to one half times l1 which is five times the current squared so notice for the first two terms 
If the current is negative or positive, it doesn't make any difference. You always get a positive term. But on the third one, notice it's L1 times L2. And even though we took a positive sign there because we entered a current on the dot side for both inductors, notice if one of those is negative, that term will become negative in that case. All right, so let's plug that in. So we have um, negative 3.389 squared plus one half times L2, which is four Henry's times the current, which is a 2.824, 2.824 quantity squared. And this would be plus the mutual coupling 2.5 times L1 is a minus 3.389 and L2 is a positive 2.824. All right, so notice that that third, third term will now become a negative value. Okay, let's work these out. So we have 3.389 squared times 2.5. And that gives us 28.7. So E is equal to 28.7, and that would, of course, be joules. All right, next one, plus... 2.824 squared times 2, so that would be a plus 15.95 joules. I had an extra decimal place because it ended up be kind of being halfway between 15.9 and 16.0. And then at the end here, that would be a plus or minus, minus the quantity 2.5 times 3.5. 389 times 2.824 and that gives me some minus 23.93 joules. I'm going to do this one again just to get a better value. 3.389 squared at times 2.5. That gives me 28.71. Put a 1 there. All right. So now when we combine that, we have 28.71 plus 15.95 minus 23.93, and that gives us 20.73 joules, and that is the energy stored in the two inductors and because of the mutual coupling at that moment in time. So, of course, that is only at t equal one second. Can't forget about that because it'll be different at a different moment in time. But that is how we calculate the energy stored in a system like that.